The order you arrange the shots in your edit is fundamental in film editing. The structure of your sequence could hold back information from your character, but not your audience or have your character know before the audience does. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about editing and why the structure of your sequences are important. Welcome to the film lock. We're gonna start off with a little bit of a history lesson. In 1920, a filmmaker called Lev Kulshoff performed an experiment to demonstrate that, depending on how your shots are assembled, the audience will attach different meaning and emotion to them. Kulshoff cut three different sequences together. The first shot was always an expressionless close-up of Ivan Mushchuklin, who was a Russian actor. The shots that followed showed the actor reacting to a child in a coffin, a bowl of soup and a woman laying on a sofa. When you watch each sequence separately, you get a different meaning and emotion. The first is sadness, the second is hunger and the third is lust. We've created three different sequences with Richard. Let us know in the comments below what emotion you get and what you think Richard is thinking. This whole experiment is called the Kulshoff effect and if you want to learn more I've added some links in the description if you want to check them out. This was the early days of editing and a lot has been learnt and edited since 1920 but his experiment and the effect it has on the audience is still very important when making films today. Now let's expand on this, instead of changing the shot let's change the order of the shot in the sequence. We've created a short sequence which takes place in a back alley. Police officer Rusty Johnson is investigating crimes that have happened in the area when he hears glass smashing. This sequence is a question and answer sequence. It's one the audience can follow and anticipate the outcome. Shot A is of the police officer walking down the back alley and asks the first question. Where are the bad guys and what was that noise? Shot B asks a new question. What has the police officer found? And shot C gives us the answer. The police officer has found the bad guy committing a crime. Now let's change the order of the shots and put shot C after shot A and see how it plays out. Shot A still asks the same question, where are the bad guys and what was that noise? But by changing the order, the context of the scene has changed and Shot C now becomes the answer to Shot A. The bad guys are over here. Shot C also asks another question. Will the bad guy get away before the police officer gets there? The final shot of the sequence, which is now Shot B, answers the question. The police officer has found the bad guy committing the crime. The order of the sequence allows the filmmaker to share the information with the audience by allowing them to know what the police officer is up against before the police officer does. By editing the sequence in this order, it creates suspense because we know the police officer is getting closer to the bad guy. Unlike the first example where we do not know the geography between the two characters. Let's change the context of the scene again and have shot C first. By showing the bad guy committing the crime at the start of the scene, a suspenseful situation is established for the rest of the scene, and again, the audience knows something that the police officer does not. When we cut to shot A, the tension is raised because we know the police officer has heard the bad guy and is close. Shot B now asks another question, has the police officer got there in time to stop the bad guy? By changing the structure and the sequence in these three examples, it allows us to change what the viewer knows and when. There is no right or wrong answer when it comes to the order of the shots in your sequence. It all depends on the type of film you are making. Placing the shots together is obviously done in the edit, but you can start to think about how each shot connects to each other in the storyboards and even when you're writing your script. Making the choice in the script and storyboard stage will allow you to plan and shoot for the edit. If you start to change the sequence and the shots for the first time in the edit, you may not have all of the coverage you need to do so. 
but the three examples we showed all work and give the audience a different context to the scene. And it was all done in the edit, so it really just depends on the type of film you are making. There are a couple of things you can think about to help work out what is the best structure for your film. Do you want to hold information back from your character but let your audience in on the secret? Or have your character hide the information from your audience and reveal something big at the end? Think about the best time to reveal who the bad guy is to your audience. Revealing this early on will create suspense and have your audience screaming at the screen telling your character not to trust them, but having it early might spoil the surprise. In a murder mystery, where your character is finding clues about the killer, it might be best for your audience to just go along for the ride, which is example one from the three that we spoke about. A lot of the information for this episode was taken from the book Film Directing, Shot by Shot by Stephen D. Cads. I would highly recommend picking it up as it goes into a lot more detail about this subject and a bunch of others. If you want to help support this channel, you can find a link to that book in the description below. And let us know in the comments below about what you think Richard was thinking in those three sequences. And remember, achieve it one shot at a time.